How's it going guys? James96 here back with another episode of Search for Steve and the Curse of the Desert Temple. Yes, we're back guys with another episode. It's been a little while since the last one and I do apologise for that and we will get into that in just a second. But first of all, I thought I'd start with a positive rather than a negative. So, something huge has happened since the last episode which is our map or my map, Search for Steve and the Curse of the Desert Temple got put on the front page of the Minecraft forums website, which is absolutely incredible. For my first map I ever made, which I made as a 100 subscriber special, for it to get on the front page of the Minecraft forums website is just insane. And for all of those who are watching these videos because of that, welcome, I guess. And uh, yeah, it's slightly surreal. I was not expecting that when I was planning out my first map, sort of what I could kind of expect. I was just hoping for maybe a couple of hundred downloads. Uh, max, at least, you know, a hundred downloads considering it was a hundred subscriber special. But to get to where we're at now is just, you know, it's insane. It's one of those things which you really just don't expect uh, when you're planning stuff out. For it to get to that kind of level, I mean, we've got over 10,000 downloads now over the two main websites it's on, which is Minecraft Maps and Minecraft Forums. And it's just, <laughs> I can't quite work it out. The map trailer's got over 7,000 views, and the first episode of this playthrough's got over 1,000 views, and it's just, it's insane. It's a map that I made, and it's getting this much attention. It's like, for me, that's just incredible. But anyway, all I wanted to say was just, that is awesome. And yeah, now let's quickly cover over why it's been a while since an episode. I would have loved to have put an episode out, you know, the day after uh, everything happened. But unfortunately, things didn't quite pan out like that. I've kind of got a full video on my channel explaining exactly what happened. So if you want to check that out, then you can do that. It kind of explains why there's been no videos at all. But uh, basically what happened was I updated to Windows 10 when I got back from holiday. It wasn't recording properly, so I... Uh, downgraded back and everything went wrong and I lost all my programs which lost this world and all of the stuff to do with it and all of my backups were in the Minecraft folder which got deleted which was really frustrating so I've actually had to recreate everything in this world which has taken me about a week to do uh, by the time that you know I'd got everything sorted to the point where I could even start recreating the world so that is kind of what's going on so things seem slightly different that's why but I think I've done a pretty accurate job I've spent ages going through all the videos so it's pretty accurate to where we're at so I wouldn't worry too much about it to be honest uh, if you see a couple of things which should be slightly different then that is why uh, but I'm not that worried about it if you think you've seen anything major which I've kind of messed up on then just comment it below but we're not going to focus that on that too much today so what we are going to be doing today is making a bit more progress with a few things. So first of all, what I want to do is I want to put a water bucket in the uh, in the temple as a sacrifice. So let's head over there now. And our mob farm, I haven't spent too much time AFK, obviously, because uh, I've had to rebuild it. But uh, it's got a few drops in it. It's working all right. I don't think it works when we're over at the base which is a bit of a shame but I need to spend a bit more time playing on the map anyway to be able to tell for sure if that's the case because it's quite hard to tell but anyway let's go in now so water bucket is this one I believe let's eat a bit of food and offer this up yay accepted it awesome now let's get out the temple because it drops my frames a bit still can't really help that <laughs> happens to everyone even me um, but yeah Okay, so that is where we're up to with that. So, I keep saying so. So, let's stop saying so. So, 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 so. Right. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. I recorded a few things today. Right. Let's get up on top of this mountain and get back over to our base because what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be searching for something in particular that's referenced in one of the books which we haven't done yet which I think is quite a cool thing to do. I heard a co I saw a couple of people comment on it, saying that they couldn't find it. And what I'll say straight away is that this one that we're going to find here isn't intended for everyone to find because it's not key to the storyline. So if you don't find it, don't worry because you can continue with the map without actually finding this place ever. So I wouldn't be too worried about it. All right, can we get up? <laughs> Parkouring around here. Let's go over here and jump on up. So let's find, we've got to try and find the book which we need. Is it this one? 
Um, no, not that one. Very advanced system for finding out which book I need. Okay, yeah, here we go. So, let's read through the book again, and then we'll go from there. Dear Journal, the extreme lack of water has driven me to very risky strategies. I've ventured into this alternate dimension where the heat is intolerable because I needed to forge an item which should aid my survival. Whilst water is scarce around the temple, rain is present which suggests water is evaporating before it can pull together on the ground. My best chance of, find, of gaining valuable water supplies is to find a moister, higher area and place one of my rain collectors there to try and capture the droplets of water which occasionally fall from the sky. Now this is the important part. I encountered a tribe of three locals here who told me that I need to place the collector on a block discoloured by rain in order to stand a chance of gathering what I need. They seemed very knowledgeable about the temple and had great skills which would have been useful to me. However, they disappeared through my portal and were gone before I could pursue them. Steve. Okay, so. Steve has obviously encountered a group of three local people. Now, we want to try and find those local people, but we don't know where they are. So, that is what we're going to be finding in in, vote, in commas this episode. Uh, in quotation, rather, not commas. Right. So, what do we need for this adventure? I'm really sorry I keep saying so in this game. It's paranoid me now. Right. And, and right. Let's go this way, then. I think we've got all the stuff we need. We don't really need that much because I know where we're going, which obviously helps. Um, and then we're just going to go over in this direction. It's actually very close to spawn. and that's what a lot of people don't realise, is they think that they have to travel for miles away to find them. You can actually find these people before quite a few of the items are required because it's actually just up this mountain here. So we've got a bit of a hike ahead of us, but once we get to the top, it's going to be worth it because we're going to hopefully make a important discovery and yes like I said this area is not particularly easy to find so if you don't find it then that is why it's not made specifically for people to find it's not a uh, key to the storyline it's just a little additional thing for people who explore more thoroughly than others who will find it but then you'd not necessarily think to look up every mountain. And even if you did, it's not that noticeable from the top, I guess. So you can understand why a lot of people won't find it. But anyway, let's continue our adventure upwards. It's uh, training quite a lot of my hunger doing this. So let's continue up. Up, 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 straight to the top. <laughs> All right. We're getting close to the top now. Which is where we need to be, obviously. Well, we don't need to be at the top, but that's the best way to discover this place, I've decided. Again, this is one of those episodes where it's more just showing people how to continue with the map, rather than me sort of playing through it too much myself. Next episode, we'll go back to another sort of play episode. I want to do some more work on my base area, and really get some more farms going for that, I think, would be quite useful. And there's also some other building stuff which I'd like to do. So we'll work on that next time probably. Oh, can I get up here? It's very tough terrain to get around in this map. Aha, it's actually just here. So it's not even right at the top of the mountain. It's just here. And if you look down, you'll see a lava pit. Which obviously isn't that obvious. I mean, the big channel down should be quite a big hint. But you'll see... That there's actually some stone slabs on display there. So yeah, this one oh is definitely not that easy to discover. I accept that. And maybe I made it a bit too difficult, but I don't want a bit the whole map to be easy. I want it to be the people that play the longest will actually discover more stuff. And if we just jump down here. And here we are. So I see one, two, three villages down here. Okay, let's try and get across to them. Uh, I guess if we just dig down around here, we'll get to them. I haven't actually planned this part out too much. I was thinking how on earth are people going to save these guys. Because it's not a particularly pleasant environment, I guess is the best way to describe it. Alright, I'm just going to drop down here. Awesome. Hello, Alexio. What can you offer me? 24 coal for one emerald? 
four iron for four emerald for one iron helmet. So you're a pretty bog, bog standard blacksmith by the looks of it. Okay. Uh, can I get to anyone else? How many blocks have I got on me? Not that many. I didn't really plan this out very well, did I? I just need to make sure that this guy doesn't try and escape because he will die. Good. Right, he's safe. Let's continue on our adventure. I don't know if you can like shift on iron bars, so let's get on a proper block. This is really <laughs> scary actually, really tense, trying to go over this lava lake. Okay, who are you? Frank! Hey! So <laughs> Frank is a reference to my cave-in series. Frank was the first villager that I uh, converted in Caven and he somehow died so that is why I've called this one Frank so Frank is offering me 21 wheat for one emerald 15 potatoes for one emerald 15 carrots for one emerald and one emerald for two bread so he's just a farmer not just a farmer Frank you're a way of life but yeah that's what he is offering me and then let's go check out this last uh, tribesmen over here. These are useful villages so far, I would say. I think there's definitely some potential in them. Let me try and get the blocks that we need. Okay, so if we put maybe a block there, a block here. Good. And then who are you? Forbes. Interesting. What is Forbes offering? Ah, Forbes is offering one emerald for eight eggs. One emerald for six pumpkins. One emerald for seven leather. That's very useful. All right, so Forbes is a custom villager. He's actually offering me specific trades. He's a very useful villager to me. Those are some pretty useful trades I think we'll find. So that is good. Okay, so we found that area. That is gonna be very useful to us. We've gotta somehow get these guys out at some point, but we're not gonna do that right now because we wanna make sure that they stay safe. And we need to plan a route of escape for them. So what I'm going to do is I am going to work on transporting them out of this area. And once I've kind of got a rough idea of how I'm going to do it, we will see what the time is on the episode. Actually, it's looking quite lengthy already this episode. So let's have a think a second what we want to try and achieve here. These guys are perfectly safe at the moment. We've lit up the area. I don't think they're going to be able to get attacked from anywhere. I might actually just remove the sandstone so that mobs can't just drop down onto them. Because I designed the platforms so that mobs can't just get onto them. So yeah, I'm just going to destroy this for now. And we'll have to come back and rescue these guys at another point. They're going to have to stay captured for a bit longer. But yeah, we can definitely use them for trading purposes, especially the custom villager and also the farmer is a particular favourite of mine, Frank, because he's got some useful stuff. We've got to work out how we're going to get out here as well. Um, parkour, good, okay we made it. Right, let's try and work our way out and I'm going to work my way out and I will see you in a sec. Okay, so we've got a bit more time than I thought, so we're going to go for the uh, great escape here. We're going to try and dig these guys to freedom. Let me just break that as well, because for some reason I don't trust it. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention, which I'd completely forgotten about, to be honest, so if I hadn't gone for underneath, which uh, I did, then uh, I wouldn't have noticed the emerald blocks which are underneath each of these uh, cages, I guess. So, yeah, if you want to go and grab those, I'm going to grab mine between episodes I think because that's just going to require hollowing out a bunch of lava. Now the question is can I push this guy without having to put any walls around? I don't trust villagers at all so I'm going to put a wall around and in the long term I think I'll be a lot more appreciative that I spend a couple of seconds putting a wall around this rather than oh yeah we lost that villager. Rest in peace. Okay. So can we just break these? We can. Good. probably going to fall out when I do this. Oh no, it's not. Oh, that's what a surprise. Villagers are already causing me problems. I'm going to break, to break like the entire cage down at this rate. Right. 
If I push you down this tunnel, are you going to go down the ladder? Oh, let's get rid of you. You shouldn't have any doors to confuse him. I don't think there's any villagers nearby. I need to know what happens when I push him onto here. Are you going to fall down? You are. Are you in control? You are. And I just want to keep them somewhere safe down the bottom. I don't want them wandering off. So this is the tunnel which just goes directly to where the base is. Okay, he made it down to the bottom. That's good. So if we just kind of wall off here and wall off there, then they should be perfectly safe. So that's one down. We've got two to go. This should be a fairly simple operation, hopefully. <laughs> operation to save the villagers. But uh, we'll have to sit all well, tribesmen, as I should say. Come on, James, stick to your storyline. <laughs> uh, right, okay. One down. What's the next one? Over here. Let's head off. Go at a diagonal, maybe. Across the lava. It's a really cool area. I might actually build something in here at some point. Probably don't want to destroy too much of the lava. Oh, it's too late to worry about that. We can always just go to the nether to replenish the lava because it's only the surface layer that's had the issue but yeah I might actually build something in here in the future so we're going to need to bring our guard rails around as well they're going to keep these guys from dying on me need to make sure I line it up properly as well don't like leave a gap for myself and or a villager to fall down let's break these iron bars then get at the villager. Okay, hopefully he's standing in the middle. No, once again. They seem to not like standing in the middle. Come on, Frank. Alright, I'm not going to let you die this time, Frank. I'll be very disappointed if you die. Oh, Frank. There we go. It's not your fault, Frank. It was my fault. <laughs> Come on, go through. Good. Nice and quick now. Just go down the hole. Okay, have fun. I'm just going to assume that he made it. Probably a bad idea, especially with one named Frank. They tend to cause the most problems. Right, this last one's going to be slightly more difficult because it's very low down. Damn map maker making my life more difficult than it needs to be. Oh, wait. <laughs> ah. Still not quite over the uh, fact that I obviously made the map. Right. That looks good enough to me. Just like so, I guess. Diagonal all the way. It is. And then this side. Like so. Good. Okay. It's a bit narrow how they where they can get out from. I guess that's not necessarily a bad thing. What's the odds this guy just decides to charge off somewhere? Not very high. <laughs> In fact, it's the complete opposite where I can't get him out of the damp corner. To be fair, he's probably a bit scared. Probably doesn't know my language and that I'm trying to help. Oh, different corner this time. <laughs> There's always one that decides to make themselves as difficult as oh jeez I'm not very comfortable on these bars come on let's just drop down go on duh <laughs> these damn villagers drive me insane do I have a walk oh I do have a water bucket on me is that a good idea I'm not even going to be able to get him out with a water bucket actually that's not going to work plus I'd end up turning this whole lava lake into obsidian which I don't really want to do Especially since I just said I'd be interested in building on it. Right. Let's try breaking this block. Just push him. Good. Okay. Now as long as I haven't messed up anywhere. No, you're trying to force yourself into a corner again. I can see the AI work in there. Okay. We should be safe now. Let's just push him. These guys are so awkward. Okay. Now if you can just fall down the hole and I'm going to join you and we'll continue with our great escape mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Alright, I'm pretty much out of food as well. I think I'm on rotten flesh. That's all I've got left. Of course, I could do some trading for some food if I had the stuff on me to trade. Alright. To be fair, I think I might just keep them here for now because uh, I'll follow the tunnel all the way down so I can show you guys where it ends up. It just comes out down by the chickens at the end here. But we don't have a sorted area for them yet. So I think it's probably best just to keep them down there for safekeeping for now. And then work out an area where I want to put them at a later date. Make them some home somewhere probably. But anyway, I think that is all we are going to do for today. So if you enjoyed the episode, then please do leave a like on it. And if you haven't already, then please subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you next time. Bye bye.